Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. Okay, let's just get into it. So first off, we have to make pizza dough. Now you can use the store-bought refrigerated stuff, but the easiest way to make it at home is to use the overnight no need method. We're gonna start off by measuring out 500 grams of bread flour, 15 grams of kosher salt, and one gram of active dry yeast. Your next step is to completely fail at mixing those simple dry ingredients together because your bowl is way too small. And begin to question why you ever thought you had the ability to teach other people how to cook on the internet in the first place. And then remember to use the mixing bowl you probably should have chosen to begin with. For this next part, things can get a bit messy, so optionally I recommend putting on some food safe gloves to prevent ruining your bougie French tips. Unfortunately, I'm not wearing gloves for this video. Oh, never mind. That was weird. With our hands now thoroughly protected from the elements, we're going to add 350 milliliters or 350 grams of water and coax the mixture together until a sticky dough ball forms. Simply place in a sealed Tupperware and let it chill out at room temperature for about 24 hours. That's it. In the meantime, we can get started on our pizza sauce. Start by bringing some extra virgin olive oil to a shimmer over medium heat and throw in some roughly chopped garlic. Hit it with the red pepper flakes and saute for about one minute or until fragrant. To this, we are gonna add an entire 28 ounce can of peeled certified Italian San Marzano tomatoes. You can stir the sauce and give the tomatoes a rough crush with the wooden spoon, but don't work yourself too hard because at the end of the day, the sauce is going in the blender. Finally, we're gonna polish it off with a little bit of dried oregano and onion powder before letting the sauce simmer on low heat so that the flavors can get to know each other for at least another 30 minutes. After your house begins to smell like a New York pizza joint, you know it's the right time to dump your sauce in the blender and puree until smooth and spreadable. Okay, our dough has been rising for about 24 hours and you can tell this is the next day because we're wearing a new shirt and this cool new apron we just got on Amazon. And on that note, it's dough time. But before you start shaping your dough, you're gonna wanna generously flour your work surface to prevent sticking. Your dough should be fully hydrated and soft to the touch. It should also be about double the size it was yesterday. The overnight ferment is gonna add an additional layer of complexity of flavor that you might not get from your standard store-bought pizza dough. You're then going to want to just simply lay it on your work surface and cut it into four equal segments. This recipe makes four separate pizzas. But don't worry if you don't feel like eating four pizzas right now. This dough can be frozen and thawed at a later time. Now let's take our ball of dough and very carefully pat it down into a disc. This is the point where most would be tempted to burst out the rolling pin and flatten the dough, but I plead with you, please refrain from your better instincts on this one. You could see here that I'm just ever so gently crimping the center of the disc to create something that resembles a frisbee or a flying saucer. We're then going to roll the ends of the saucer against our knuckles to allow the weight of the dough to stretch itself out into the proper pizza shape. We want to preserve the countless tiny little bubbles suspended within the dough, all of which are absolutely vital to forming a tender airy crust. A roller would simply over deflate the dough and make something that's dense and boring by comparison. Take your pizza dough and carefully migrate it onto a thoroughly floured pizza peel. Don't worry too much about having the perfect shape at this point, you still have one last chance to make your final edits once we've dressed the pizza with sauce and cheese. Speaking of which, it's time to get saucy. You're gonna wanna sauce the pie by ladling some sauce into the center of the pie, and then use the back side of the ladle to spread the sauce uniformly outward using a circular motion. Now let's top with some low moisture mozzarella. You can drown it in cheese or go light. You can go shredded or sliced like I'm using here. It really comes down to whatever you happen to prefer. The only choice you don't get to make is to use Miyoko's brand mozzarella, because if we're being truly honest with ourselves, that's the only brand worth using. Take a second to appreciate all the hard work you've put in up to this point before popping your pizza onto a screaming hot pizza peel that's been preheating at 550 degrees for at least 45 minutes and baked to seven to nine minutes. It'd be a hard sell for me to argue to you guys that pizza wasn't already the perfect food. Well, prepare to hold my beer, because I'm about to end pizza's entire career with three simple words that resonate with college students everywhere. Buffalo, chicken, ranch. Let's begin by creating the buffalo ranch accoutrement for our pizza. We can start the buffalo sauce by melting a big old slab of butter into a small saucepan. Once fully melted, add an entire bottle of Franks. So optionally, bottle them in these cute little condiment bottles for easy application to our pizza, and that's it. Next, for the ranch, finely mince one to two cloves of garlic, or optionally, use a garlic press. Mix in about half a cup of mayo, a teaspoon of onion salt, a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper, and a good glug or two of white vinegar. Whisk those together until no clumps remain, and it has a slightly runny consistency. Again, bottle off the ranch sauce for easy application and you're good to go. The only thing left to do is thinly slice some red onion and some room temperature guardian chicken patties. At this point, you guys know the deal. Sauce your pie and make your last superficial corrections before you hit it with the cheese and all your other toppings. And then into the oven it goes. Remove your pizza from the oven and hit it with the buffalo and ranch sauce. At this point, your pizza's done and ready to be devoured. 
but before digging in like some kind of wild animal, let the pizza chill out and cool for a few to avoid melting the roof of your mouth. So there you have it, veganized artisan pizza entirely from scratch and way better than you could ever find at your local pizzeria joint. I appreciate you guys taking the time to make pizza with me today, and if you liked the episode, it would mean the world to me if you could smash that like button, subscribe, and share this pizza with the rest of the world. Also, if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see veganized in future episodes, please comment down below with your suggestions. Thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.